So opus two, number two now, we are on the second of his sonatas. Um, a stark contrast, even though this was a, uh, still written in the same year, 1795, and dedicated to Haydn as well. In fact, the whole of the opus two, number one to three, um, all within the same uh, set. But uh, what a contrast we have here. A major, a lot more accessible key in contrast to the, uh, um, the, the F minor that we had for number one. Um, structurally, again, fairly uh, conventional, fairly straightforward, but a lot of, and in a way, a lot of influence still from Mozart and Haydn and, and so forth. Still, this is, again, the time he was um, still studying composition, really, himself in, in many ways. So uh, there's a lot of influence, nevertheless, uh, there are a lot of developments that we can see, which I'm looking forward to exploring now. Um, one of the things that I seem to remember talking about for number one is, of course, this concept of nice Beethoven is can Beethoven be nice? And this really, particularly the opening, it, it, is, it is by no means a sinister opening. So we do want to really go with the music and see, see where we go. Um, so here we are, the opening of the first movement. Um, so straight away, <clears throat> Beethoven is known to have taken a lot of walks in the words and he took his notepad and sketched ideas. Um, I don't know whether he was doing that when this theme came about. Clearly the cuckoo, and then you've got another one, a little bit higher, the second one, and then it goes on. And here we have the response to the cuckoo. We have, now this, obviously not a direct uh, relation at all, but it does remind me of the bird catcher aria. You've got... Um, that, the pan flute that the bird catcher comes with. There is a certain texture which feels very similar. So I think it's nothing wrong. Let's go with the, the bird theme here, possibly in the woodlands or wherever he might have been taking a walk at the time. So again, we have that the, the, the usual, it becomes a bit usual, but the, the concept of three, repeating third time. The first one, the second time, as I said, it's a little bit raised. And then third time, a very long dominant seventh. And once you get those details, then you do want to be able to play through all that the, the chunks of three in more or less one breath, really, so that um, uh, it's not chopped up. It's the opening, and this is almost like an introduction. It's the, the main movement hasn't even started yet, in, 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 a, in a way. It really starts, and you've got all these things happening um, very soon. Uh, so in a way, this is almost an introduction. So we want to make sure we play through the one, two, three, four, five, six, well, the first eight bars, really, without chopping them up too much. So that's the intro that we have here. And again, bit like the that we talked about for number one, again, we have that uh, Mannheim rocket, the musical device of the, the surging uh, rise. Not so much just yet. The next bit that I just played briefly, is that's the, the reflection of the right hand. And then, that really gets us going um, a few few lines down the line so let's take